caught, which is a small ship, and when he came home on leave, they, they sent him back to the States to christen another ship and gave him a leave. And they, when he got back, he got on a destroyer and went right back into action. And he was, he had a boy with him from Shipman and another boy from over Nevada, over, over Rockfish Valley. But Theo was living when I came home on leave and got married. And he died soon after I went back to the West Coast and nobody let me know about it. I ought to come home to be his funeral. And then Frank and two other boys, Frank was dating Francis, she was with them, and one of the other boys was dating another girl. They got in an accident. And Frank and Francis had left the party. It was over close to Lovingston, uh, Nelson High School. They had left the party and gone back to the car and gotten in the back seat. They left a little early so they'd get the back seat. Well, Alvin Bryant, who had been in the Navy, and Cicero Bryant had been in the Navy, and they were both discharged. And Alvin was driving, and Cicero was just this other girl, and they got in an accident, and Cicero and the other girl, oh, they came down and some way con Frank and Francis out of the back seat. And Frank and Francis were in the front seat. And when they got in the accident, both of them in the back seat got killed. Yeah. Ooh. And Frank almost. And Frank was in bad, bad, bad shape in the hospital for a long time. And nobody told me about that. Nobody wrote told me about that. So when I came home, he was back on his feet, but he couldn't raise one of his arms in a howl on that. Francis wasn't injured as bad, badly? Uh, neither was the driver. And by the way, he became General Mark Clark's chauffeur when Mark Clark was in charge of the Citadel. Who did? Alvin. Alvin Brown. Uh, but the boy that was with this girl that got killed, both of them got killed, he was married. And then, of course, Frank had a heart attack when he was 47 or 8. And he tried to live. He quit drinking altogether. And they called him back in the Navy because he was in reserves for the war with. Korea. Mm -hmm. And they sent him back to the Pacific. He was in action out there. And what ship was he on then? Huh? You know what ship? Remember what ship he was on then? One of them was a Shields. That was a destroyer. And I 
I can't remember the name of the destroyer escort. <coughs> Robert was on a aircraft, on a baby aircraft carrier that was converted from a, another ship. They just put a. And John, would you say the name of that was Munda? USS Munda. USS Munda. By the way, did you know that that was hit by a kamikaze plane? No. Mm -hmm. It was. When your dad was? Mm -hmm. Dad was on the ship um, the entire time. And Ann and I just, had, and Martha happened to be up in uh, D.C. and we did some research and that's the first time I had ever heard it was hit by a kamikaze plane. Really? Well, Grace, Grace we, skipped, we skipped over the, the, the wedding part, uh, uh, but where, where was the wedding All right. held? Uh, Frank and Francis were thinking about getting married. So Frank and I said, well, hell, let's all, all four of us get married together. But well, both of the girls said no. <laughs> so Frank got married five days before I did. But anyway, when I asked Grace to marry me, she said no. So a few minutes I asked her again, she said no. So a few minutes I asked her again, she said, yeah. I said, when? She said, Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> this was about Thursday or Friday. If you're going to do it, you might as well do it right away. Before you change your mind again. That's right. <laughs> so Frank got married on Friday, and we got married on the following Wednesday. Where? In, Frank got married in Lynchburg. In my home. In Piney we went to the wedding there. Oh, you got married in your home. We got married in your home. And did people, not have a church wedding. All the people that came small. to the wedding were my sister Mary, my sister Evelyn. Louis. Uh, Frank Ballard. Juliet and Louis. Juliet. Uh, Juliet and Lewis, and my mother and my brother Gene. Brothers, Grace's brothers, and uh, no, just one brother. Bill and Ida stopped speaking for a while because we didn't tell them we were getting married. They got left out again. <laughs> <laughs> my brother Bill and Ida, mm -hmm. his sister. Oh, okay. Where was he? He was he in Texas? Oh, he was. I thought he was in the Navy. He might have been in Tech. No, he wasn't in the Navy. I guess he was. He was in Tech. Yeah. And who performed the uh, ceremony? We had an Episcopal priest from Clifford who came to the house and did it. I've and, forgotten his name. And Aunt Ida wasn't invited because she just what, didn't happen to be in town well, she, at the time. She was working. It was during a week, mm -hmm. a work day. I think she worked in Washington. Right. And there wasn't Original a whole lot of notice. Work. In Washington. Yeah, and Mary was uh, working in Lynchburg, uh -huh. so she was there. Uh -huh. It was only the people who were right there in right. the community. Right. So um, we knew that if we called uh, Bill or Ida or anyone from out of town, they'd have to miss work or school. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we didn't think that was necessary. So, Pat. Grace's daddy, we called, called him Pat. He was a, he had a recorder, and he recorded the wedding. Hmm. What well, he did made a record. Uh, Gene and Billy Frank Bella, who was her uncle, recorded the wedding. And when it got to the part that the preacher was asking us a question, will you take us? And so forth. He got halfway through, and Grace said, "I will." I do. <laughs> and when he finished, she said, "I do again." <laughs> that sounded a little eager, didn't it? <laughs> Very eager. <laughs> so we caught the train. It's like the ice was melting for the refreshments. Right. <laughs> we caught the train in Lynchburg. And went to Washington and stayed in the Shoreham Hotel. And we have a picture over there on that wall of us 
while we were on our honeymoon. And when we were married 50 years, I called ashore and said, we spent our honeymoon up there 50 years ago and we'd like to come back. And I told them what dates I wanted to stay, three or four days. They said, the only day we got is the day that you were married. The only vacancy we got. He said, do you remember what you paid for the room? They said, would you believe $9? Yeah. They said, well, we'll honor that. And so we went up there on that 50th anniversary, paid them $9 for the room, and just like our honeymoon, it was them chip hammers breaking out about <laughs> 5 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> But when we left there, we paid them $9 for the room, $14 to park a car, and $35 <laughs> for the breakfast. That's funny. And then when we had our 65th wedding anniversary, which was last year. This year. This year. This year. We called them again. And they said they couldn't give us a nine dollar rate. <laughs> they <laughs> did they, reduce it. They did knock off, you know. And gave us a little suite. Or something like one that. of those executive suites, you know that. Very nice, very nice accommodations. All right, and where was Frank married in, in Lynchburg? Was he married in a church, or was that a private ceremony in a home? Went to the preacher's house. To the preacher's house. Mm -hmm. And he spent his night, his first night in the Carroll Hotel in Lynchburg. And did they go anywhere after that? Yeah. That, that was, the honeymoon was over then. They had to work. <laughs> had, had to go back to work. <laughs> was Frances still in school? Or had she finished? Yeah, she was still in high school. She was in high oh. school. She finished her, her year in high school the following year. I mean, this was in the summertime. This was in August. And she went back to high school to get her last year in September. All right. Let me ask one more question, and then I'll, I'll let John uh, see if he, he wants to uh, uh, ask any. But several people did want to know about the experience that your mother went through in, in Camille. Uh, in, in 1969 when the hurricane hit? All right, she was living alone. Uh, father died in 1941. Uh, Ida and Mary both finished high school in 1942, which was only about six months after, seven, eight months after he died. And they both left home and went to Richmond and worked for the patent office. And Mariah looked after him, your mother looked after him. Uh, originally it helped him find a place to board notes. And Then just my mother, mother and I lived there from 1942 and summer of 42 until, because hmm. Frank, Frank left too. He dropped out of school and went down to Tech and took sheet metal, sheet metal work classes. And and he came back and joined the Navy. And I and Mary working at the patent office in Richmond. And, uh, and Mary signed up for the 
to go be a nurse, go to nursing school at Lynchburg General. Mm -hmm. And I stayed with the patent office and when the war was over, they moved the patent office back to Washington and she went up to Washington with them. And when I came home from the Philippines, I came cross country in a bus, it took five days, and ended up in Washington. So I got in touch with the island. She and I went out to dinner and to a nightclub. And then when I got out of the Navy, First day I was home, I told Grace, I'm going to Richmond tomorrow to find a job. She tried to talk me into taking a month off or something. Now I got to get a job. So I went down to Richmond and this boy that was out of the Navy, that was a real close friend of my brother Frank's, he went with me. He, he was still in the Navy. And he went with me and we hitchhiked down there and I told him about they didn't want to take me. They, I told him I had to go right there. Uh, that boy he was a, what they call an armed guard in the Navy, which meant that he was on a, he was a person, he was, a, was one of the people, one of the seven, eight people on a merchant ship that manned the guns, a few little guns I had five inches, three inches, something like that. And one time, I don't know whether he was in Boston or New York, but there's five ships supposed to go out and join, join a convoy. And first three went out, he was to be the fourth ship. First three went out, got blown up in sight of shore. And I said, well, what'd y'all do? He said, they decided not to send us. After all three had gone out and got blown up. What, submarines? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so how does that relate to the flood? Which was the question. Your mother in the flood. Well, no, it talked about the marriage. Now we go back to the flood. Uh, the night of the flood, I was in Minneapolis uh, hmm. what's the Twin City? St. Paul. St. Paul. I was in St. Paul. And I had the biggest scare of my life, not to do anything with the flood. I was by myself on, on business and I wanted to go to a Mexican restaurant. So I got the phone book and looked at, looked at Mex, Mex, Mexican restaurants in St. Paul and in uh, Minneapolis. I found a couple of good ones, went down and got a cab and told him I wanted to go to a Mexican restaurant over in 